Hello again to one and all. Thanks so much for joining me for another of my weekly Journeys and Insights updates. This has been a difficult week for our fellow Americans who have experienced the tragic loss of life of their loved ones serving in our armed forces in Afghanistan during the final days of our involvement in that war-torn country. We grieve with these parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, and lifelong friends as we ask our loving God to hold them in his heart and to comfort those in this time of tremendous sorrow. It's our hope and prayer that the knowledge that these brave service members were pursuing their life's ambition in service to their country provides some source of comfort now and in what will surely be difficult days ahead. We must never forget these brave service members and all who have laid down their lives for others in service to our nation. Also this week, you have followed the terrible devastation that residents along the Gulf Coast have experienced due to Hurricane Ida. The images are certainly harrowing and the full extent of the damage and toil in terms of the loss of human life will not be known for several days. We must all pray for those whose lives have been upended and who now face tremendous anxiety as they consider how to begin to put their lives back together. We must also give thanks to God for the heroic service of so many aid workers who are responding to those in need and will be providing for basic needs and above all hope. The age old question of why God allows such terrible things to happen can only be answered by an abiding trust that what we experience in this life, for better and worse, is not our only reality. There is a greater one determined by God's plan for humanity and for each of us, not of this world, but of the kingdom still to come. It is that reality expressed through the unconditional love of God the Father, made known through Jesus Christ, his only Son. It's an eternal reality that gives meaning and purpose to our brief existence in this world, in which all of our pursuits must be directed toward. As such, the moments of pain and sorrow that we endure here and now in this life are just that, moments in the grander scheme of life eternal. And it is faith that ours is a God who never abandons and is always with us, even in the darkest of circumstances, that enables us to go on, to embrace life and all that it entails, to comfort one another in moments of aching sorrow and loss. This past Sunday, it was such a pleasure to join with so many parish leaders and fellow priests at the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, directed by the Barnabite Fathers, for a special day of prayer and reflection as we continue our road to renewal. This journey we've begun is one that we must take thoughtfully yet deliberately, which is why we are taking our time and engaging in the level of consultation and collaboration that this journey and all that it intends requires. Contrary to the notion that we've in some way paused our work of renewal or put things on hold, I emphasize during our gathering that in no way have we reconsidered our need to bring about a true spirit of renewal across our diocese. What we do need to do, however, is ensure that we're fully considering the implications for making the most of our resources, sharing the talents and capabilities of our parishes with one another, defining the structure and way of being church that enables us to realize the fullness of a true family of Christian and Catholic faith. We'll continue to update you on our plans, collaboration, and progress in the days ahead. In the meantime, I want to again thank all who came together for the special day and return to your parishes to share insights gained and commitment deepened as together we continue our journey toward renewal in the days and months ahead. I realize a new school year is upon us, 
and that there's much still to do to prepare, teachers, parents, and students alike. Know that I keep you all in my prayers each morning and each night. May God bless and guide you and all those whom you love in these final days of summer, and as we now begin to turn our sights toward the fall season. Have a blessed week and coming Labor Day weekend. I look forward to speaking with you again very soon.